Dark Souls is one of my favourite games of all time. It's massively influential to the point where Souls-like has become its own genre. Tons of ideas from Dark Souls have inspired other games. The punishing difficulty, the deep but hidden lore, and giant set-piece bosses have all become more widespread because of its influence. One aspect of the original game that's less commonly replicated is the interconnectivity of the world. In the first half of Dark Souls there's no fast travel, but there is still a harbour and several important locations a player might want to revisit. Instead of requiring a ton of backtracking, the game seamlessly connects the different areas in ways which both make sense and allow for convenient access. While on paper this might seem like it could end up being contrived, it ends up being the opposite. The world of Dark Souls ends up feeling extremely believable. As you walk up the hill from Firelink to Undeadburg, you pass through a sewer. Later on you visit a sewer below Undeadburg, so it makes complete sense that you end up unlocking a door that leads back to Firelink. At the top of Undeadburg there's a parish with another shortcut, and elevated down to Firelink Shrine. There's also Dark Roots next to the parish, a forest that eventually leads back down to Firelink. The first time I went down that elevator and saw how the area I'd just spent hours crawling through connected back to the hub was the moment I became obsessed with this game. I genuinely don't think I'd be the Dark Souls fan I am if the game was just a set of unconnected linear levels. These all seem like convenient shortcuts, but then you look up at the parish and see the hills surrounding it. You'll notice things like the bridge where you saw a dragon. Maybe you'll wonder what that tower in the distance is. Maybe you'll look down and hold on, what are those pillars? This isn't a comprehensive list and I could keep going but you get the point by now. The first half of Dark Souls is full of this kind of world design. Areas which at first feel like separate levels end up coming together to form a cohesive place. Don't worry, I'll get to the second half of the game in a bit. It's not just that this design helps the world to feel more grounded, it's also a huge part of what makes the game so replayable. Blight Town is a mandatory area, you have to go through at least part of it. The normal route is to go down from the depths and come in from the top, but then you exit through a side entrance. On later playthroughs you might decide to go straight to that side entrance. You can get there from Firelink, or you can go down from Deep Root. In fact, you can skip the Undead Burg completely. The only mandatory areas in this part of the game are the Undead Parish and Blight Town. The feeling of knowing exactly how all of the areas of Lordran are connected and mapping your way through them is something you don't often find in games, especially ones that aren't Metroidvanias. I know some people do refer to Dark Souls as a Metroidvania, but that's a discussion for another time. This isn't the right video to discuss genre. I think designing the world like this complements the way the story is told. Although there's a ton to speculate about specific characters or the player's place in the story, most of the actual world building is quite concrete. As you learn more about the world, it all starts to make sense and feel like a real place, both geographically and in its writing. The lore being so hidden from a casual player only works because the game makes you invested in the world through its design. These connections between each area get you asking questions. Why is there someone wearing unique armour in the tower that connects Dark Root to Undeadburg? Why are both of the entrances locked? Is he a prisoner? I'm not sure how much most players bother asking these questions, but I do feel like the game points you in that direction by getting you so invested in the world. I'd be lying if I said this design had no issues whatsoever. Firstly, while some of this is locked behind the master key, there's nothing to stop an unsuspecting new player from picking that as their starting item and getting stuck. Even without the master key, the game doesn't stop you from going somewhere you probably shouldn't. I imagine a lot of players gave up with the game because they went to the Catacombs or Ash Lake far too early and got stuck in an area they were massively underleveled for. The biggest issue with this design is how difficult it is to pull off. This interconnectivity wasn't an afterthought, it's a key part of the design. Illusory Wall has a video showcasing some early prototypes for maps and you can see that this idea was baked in from the very beginning. It's clear that this design choice took a lot of time and effort. It's understandable that most developers just don't bother and add fast travel instead. Even in Dark Souls, the game I've been praising, they give up with this idea halfway through and give the player the ability to fast travel between bonfires. It's no secret that Dark Souls suffered from rushed development. I think with more time, the second half of the game would have been more interconnected. In the second half of the game you have to kill four bosses. While you can do this in any order, they all feel like completely separate tasks. Each boss is at the end of their own level and the only connection to any other part of the map is the entrance to that area. There are some superficial connections. For example, you can see the demon ruins from the Tomb of the Giants, but there's no physical connection. Even though you can see it, to get there you'd have to go up through the catacombs, back to Firelink, down to Blight Town, and to the demon ruins by the normal route. Don't get me wrong, I do still like the second half of Dark Souls, I just think the world design is inferior. Exploring the world in the first half of Dark Souls is an amazing experience. I don't think I've seen a world as deeply interconnected in any other game I've played. It makes me wish more games experimented with not having fast travel. Having to design around this limitation meant that FromSoft had to put real care into how the world was laid out. 
The only other FromSoft game I've put a significant amount of time into is Elden Ring, so it's possible their other games do this as well. I skipped the rest of the games when they came out, but replaying Dark Souls has made me think that it's time to give them a proper go. I'm not sure if I'll make videos on them, but if you are interested in my thoughts on Dark Souls 2 as a massive fan of the first game, let me know. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. It really helps me out. I'll see you next time. Thank you.